Hello and welcome uh, to my presentation about uh, full stack monitoring and NSO. Uh, yeah, my name is Olek Dittman. I work in the NSO SIT team, the Strategics Initiatives team. Uh, so generally, I work with a lot of improvements of NSO, and uh, and part of that I, I get in contact with a lot of customers and and see if both when they have problems and challenges that, that, that they need help with. Uh, and part of that, it's quite, I would say, not amazing, that, but that we have a lot of customers that do almost, have almost no monitoring of their systems. Uh, and, and when we get the ticket from them, we mainly just get the log files. Uh, and, and part of that has been driving me to actually trying to create an environment that we can distribute and, and help our customers get started with uh, monitoring the systems. Uh, and this is both during development, during testing, uh, and in production, I was at, which is the most important. Uh, uh, and later today, there is another session that, that Simon Hiller will, will, be, will, will hold, uh, where he will actually show the use cases that we, how we use uh, observability and monitoring in our own test environment. So I encourage you to visit that presentation as well. Let's get started. Sorry about the delay, it's... Do you see anything on the screen? It's coming up, sorry. Uh, I have already started. So let's go on. Uh, uh, I found this very nice quote uh, from a guy named uh, Sir Francis Bacon. He was active at the, at the end of the 16th century, uh, and, and back then he was he was working very hard to get very close to the Queen of England uh, at the time. Uh, probably doing a lot a lot of questionable things to get close, but uh, I've heard, but uh, read it on Wikipedia. But uh, what he what he has done best is is his work within uh, philosophy. Uh, so I actually said this quote, scientia potentia est, which actually knowledge is power. Because the more you know, the better decisions you can make and do improvements. Uh, and this is why I also like the uh, quote that uh, uh, if you saw Steven's presentation this morning, uh, uh, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So, so this is also re related to this, and, and I, uh, yeah, and Sir Francis Bacon has been, been called uh, the father of empirism, and he required that, that philosophy must be backed up by sci scientific evidence. So that, that is why I, I like uh, learning by doing is the best way to go forward. Uh, and what is observability. Uh, of course, you can just go to your server and you can look at it. You can look at the uh, drive light, you can look at the network light, and that was, that was actually possible 20, 30 years ago when, when it was only running one application in each server. So you, can, you saw it blinking with a specific frequency and you could, could uh, just say, oh, it seems good. It's the same frequency as yesterday. But when it stops blinking, or it blinks, or it's it's lit all the time, then you start to think something is wrong. Uh, so my view of observability is is actually it's about transparency. We need to publish as much data as we can that that can explain the behavior of your system, uh, what is happening, what what has happened, and and how long time did it, did it take? And, 
Uh, I, I think it's important that the information is as raw as possible. Uh, and that data is, of course, used for analysis uh, of the behavior of the system, of what has happened. Uh, also mainly, when you do, when you do monitoring, you, you get data about resource usage, because uh, if it runs out of RAM or it runs out of disk, then you get into problem. Very well-known problems, but today we are, I think we have even more more challenges as, as uh, NSO has has developed over the years. Uh, so now we're actually we're not monitor uh, or pushing configuration to just hundreds of devices today. Now we have customers that are actually configuring hundreds of thousands of devices with NSO, and and this is a very very big challenge, I would say, both for us and for our customers to, to know how is the system behaving? Do we have the optimal performance? Where do we have the bottlenecks? How do we, how do we uh, see that? And that is also why I want to uh, show you to Simon's presentation where he will, he will show a three-layer LSA setup and how you can actually see how it behaves and some performance metrics. And I often think more more data is good, and it is may, I would say mainly used for, for tuning and optimization. Uh, collecting data is uh, uh, I, I would say one thing. And uh, first we have we have some I want to show what kind of what observability data sources do we have in NSO. You know the log files. You most most of you have probably looked into them. Think they are garbage in some sense, but some sometimes they actually have good things in them as well. Uh, over the years, we we moved the progress trace out from the log files into a separate uh, file, and and we also can publish it using our event API. Uh, so you can actually. You have a machine-readable format that, that you can very, very easily uh, process and, and get the metrics you want. Uh, in NSO 6.0, we introduced the metrics framework, where we have this internal metric where we, I would say, mainly show you the number of sessions connected to the system. You have metrics from the commit queues. You have metrics how many devices sync from that has been performed. So, so, so when you look at that, I think you should, should think about what metrics do you want and send in a feature request for those. Uh, but then I actually realized just a few days ago, we have more uh, observability sources as well that we don't, I don't think we mentioned them as much. And those are actually all the event streams that you can subscribe to using both NetsConf and RetsConf and the event API we have. Uh, and then during this presentation or demo, I, I will not actually be using them, but, but I think it's good that they exist and we should probably consume them in some way. Because when, when you do uh, root cause analysis, I think all the, informa the more information you have, the better root cause analysis you, you can do. And then, of course, I already mentioned a lot of monitoring. And I think observability is providing data. Monitoring is consuming all that data and collecting it. Uh, so you recall the metrics. And when you record it, you store it in the database. You get the history. And that is very good. And I also think monitoring is visualization. You can actually aggregate the data. You can create nice graphs because when you have visibility, you have graphs, you can also get trends and other things. You can, over time, you can see see that the behavior of the system has changed. Uh, so I will, if we have time, I will uh, uh, show you a live demo of that later on. And then, of course, monitoring also creating thresholds. And when those thresholds are breached, we will get alarms so there is an administrator that needs to do something and fix any problem. And occasionally, 
something goes wrong, the system might crash, it might be restarted, then you need to do some root cause analysis, actually finding what, what did really happen. Uh, then the question is, of course, what to monitor? Uh, from the uh, BU, we have, so we, we have more or less always considered monitoring uh, an external activity, activity that we don't, I would say, we do not care about it, but, but uh, we don't push any specific solution to our customers. Uh, and maybe we should start doing that, but at least we should care about it and provide the means for you to actually implement any solution for to do monitoring. Of course, NSO is our our core product, so that we should you should monitor. Uh, but NSO by itself doesn't do anything at all. It's just a piece of software. You can do have the CLI. Uh, so you most likely you will running applications inside NSO. You implement services that provide configuration to to your network. Uh, and those services probably rely on on application and system running on the side of NSO. You need to have some resources you need to allocate. Uh, I would say you should monitor them as well, get metrics from them, so you can correlate the data. Then, of course, your environment is running some in some kind of uh, uh, executable environment. Containers are very often used today. And containers are provided by an operating system that should be monitored because the operating system provides the resources for all the running applications. Uh, and then to, to uh, utilize the hardware better today, so I would say everyone is using virtualized servers. Uh, and then, of course, the virtualization normally runs on hardware. Uh, and then, of course, but still, now we have a system and so running an application, but it still doesn't do anything. So you probably have, uh, or sorry, uh, then, of course, your service is intended to actually push configuration to devices. And I think you should monitor them as well. And I think it was very interesting listening to Steven's uh, presentation about actually how, how to actually see the power consumption in devices, but also in the racks. And I think that can be interesting if you want to, if you're looking for a sustainable environment. Uh, and then, as I said, it still doesn't do anything. Then you have some kind of business system top that actually pushes the things into the system that, that it's supposed to fulfill. Uh, but if you don't have a full stack monitoring system, you should at least have, have the minimum set up. Uh, just make sure you have the proper logging. I also encourage it enable the progress trace so you actually have this, this, these extra metrics. Uh, but then, of course, normally you should, you should keep an eye on the alarm to see if, if there's a problem in your network or in NSO, of course. And then keep an eye on the commit queue because uh, if if a, if a commit queue item gets stuck, you need to take care of it. Uh, yeah, as I said, I encourage you to enable the progress trace. Uh, and to actually do some monitoring, you need some software. And the question is, what should you use? There are so many solutions, and and uh, which one should you use? I would say I, I actually don't know which, which is the best. But today I will just presen present you a, a simplistic setup. You can run it in your laptop, you can run it in your test environment, and you can run it in your production if you want to. But you also have all these other. And uh, just meeting people yesterday, I actually found that there's some, something called Cygnus. Then you have Honeycomb. I haven't tested them myself, but... Uh, and that's why I think it's important that we try to provide uh, the means to actually for you to implement your monitoring solution and and harvest all the data in the way you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then in NSO we have these these I would say built-in 
features for, for, for doing monitoring. So I will go into a little bit on them. Uh, and, and the monitoring stack I will present today will actually just use the simple, simple ones. Prometheus is very simplistic, easy to start up, provides good, a lot of metrics out of the box. Grafana, you know, probably know it's good for creating graphs, doing the visualization. Uh, if you saw Christian's presentation yesterday, he was showing uh, Jäger. Grafana Tempo does, I would say, exactly the same. Uh, and then I also use Google Mtail to, to collect metrics from the log files. And that's where I think uh, uh, Splunk is the same. Uh, but for my purposes, Mtail is very good, so I will show you a quick demo of that. Uh, and what I have learned over time, and I would say this is still, might still be a problem. Uh, especially wh when you have geo-redundant systems. How do you synchronize the clocks? So I would say it, it's key that you set all the system to run in UTC. So all the timestamps when you provide the metrics is in UTC. That makes it easy to correlate all the data. Uh, and I also enable NTP, can never say it too many times. And you also need to, this I actually found out myself, that you also need to enable both in the operating system and in the virtualization. For example, if you use VMware, you need to enable it in that as well. Because I actually realized in the operating system today, you have, a, you have multiple clocks. You have probably heard of there are monotonic clocks. There are actually clocks that actually get their their input from the hardware. And they are, if the hardware is virtualization, then it might drift from the operating system. So uh, learning by doing. Uh, this is the monitoring stack that I have set up. Uh, can't mention it together with Simon. Uh, we have NSO, it's, it's the base for it. NSO is of course running inside the system, uh, where we also have the Prometheus node exporter to get the operating system metric, but also some hardware metric if you run in a hardware system. Uh, we also have the Prometheus process exporter to collect process data uh, from the operating system. Uh, but that mainly just provide, I uh, would say, raw data of the processes. And then, I, as I mentioned before, I have mtail for, for log files. Uh, but then we also have uh, some packages. The observability exporter is part of the product. Uh, but then, as part of our own internal testing, we have developed two packages. One is called the process exporter. That, that collects process metrics for, N for the NSO processes. Uh, and, and I would say as part of NSO 6, we, we have uh, to gain better concurrence. So we, we, when you start a Python VM, it will start one sub processes per call point. So there, there might be many processes. Uh, and then we also have the metrics exporter to, uh, to export the metrics framework. Uh, and to mention, uh, with the latest release of Observability Exporter, uh, that is also included in inside the Observability Exporter to export all the, all the data from the metrics framework. Uh, what, what we have in this one is that uh, with this package you can augment the Yang and that data will ex be exported automatically as well. Uh, I will not g go in very deeply on, on how the data is collected, but, but I would say there are two techniques. Scraping, which is used by Prometheus, is actually a polling mes method. Uh, that's at regular intervals, it collects data from devices. Uh, and then you have streaming, where you actually can, at the time when you have collected your data, you can stream it into some kind of centralized database. 
And why, why I want to uh, mention this is, is depending on your requirements, uh, it can be quite important because if, if you have, uh, if timestamps are key in your measurements, then streaming is better because then you can collect your data and write it into the database with the correct timestamp. Uh, with polling, you will actually get the timestamp at when the polling occurs. Uh, but it's depending on your use case and how you, I would say the policy. If you have a static system, it doesn't matter. You set it up once and it just runs. Uh, and one reason why I like Prometheus scrapings because it's a text-based uh, API. So you actually, you don't need any software to collect the data. You can use any, any command line uh, tool to just collect the data and uh, have a look at it. Uh, as I mentioned, with, with the metrics exporter included in, in this environment, you can actually just augment the metrics framework with, with some Yang and you have a da data provider that will automatically ex export the data. Uh, this is just an example of, of the Yang. Uh, you need to actually keep this, this pattern for the data to be exported. And then you have a data provider uh, that exports the data when it's read. And in this example, I just have some hard-coded value. But I have this demo where I also have, I have a counter that is increased for each called into the uh, CBCrate function. Uh, I also got the knowledge of these functions that, that you can, in the progresses, you, you know, you have three, three types of events. You have start events, you have stop events, so you get the duration, but then you also have all these info events. Uh, and these are the functions you can use in your own code to actually uh, provide even more more events for your own um, so you can have if you have a service you can actually measure how long time does it take for example to, to apply a template so you will get separate metrics for just that that part very useful uh, then if, if if you recognize we have i have two process exporter uh, data source in this one is the Prometheus process exporter exports on operating system level, but then we also have the process exporter package that exports data from within NSO. Uh, I will get back to the details on the internal. Uh, the benefit on the internal, on, on the process exporter package is that it aggregates data on NSO package level. So if there is a problem, you can very easily see that this package uses a lot of RAM or a lot of a uh, lot of CPU, and then you can dig into and, and see more individual metrics. Uh, Google Mtail ran into, it's a, I would say, quite, quite interesting uh, tool. It has a very, I would say, simplistic uh, language to, to create how you want to interpret your files, and these are two of the functions that I created. The one on top just counts the number of log lines and export it as metrics uh, into Prometheus. And the second, <coughs> and the second one breaks down uh, the log messages and, and do the counting per, uh, per severity and log file name. So you can actually see I have, have a filter to just filter out metrics for the for the NSO log files I'm interested in. Uh, let's go over and run a quick demo. Uh, because what what I think is important when you I need to stop PowerPoint, otherwise we will not see anything. So 
sorry for the delay. Uh, but what I think is Im important when we have when we provide an environment that it should be very easy to set up. I would say similar to our examples. Uh, so actually, you do a Git clone. You do a, you source the NSSRC file as usual. You do a make, and then you make start, and then it should be up and running. Uh, so I hope you will be able to use this. Uh, I've already done the Git clone and the making because I, I'm too scared of actually running this live because it will probably break. You just run Docker Compose to start up uh, the environment. Uh, and, and containers often, I would say, seem simple to use. But very often, what are all the options you need to put in your, your when, when you start a container? It's always depending on, on how the container is implemented. And that is why I would think this example is good because this puts in all the configuration to get the container started. It also sets up so you get any data that is created will get be persisted. So if you restart the container or recreate it, it you will still have the same data as before. Uh, you start NSO. Uh, now I will be running this in my Mac, so I can I will only be able to run uh, Google mtail and I will will run the node exporter. So now, so now we have something up and running quick, I guess. So I hope you will have the same progress as I have. Let's move over to the. Let's log into the NSO Web UI. And let's go back to the let's go back to the initial screen. Uh, and as you see, we have some monitoring applications in here. And then of course we have the matrix manager. So I guess you're curious what that is, but that is top secret as you can see. So if you are prepared to decide if you want the red pill or the blue pill, I can show you later on. Uh, but just let's go a quick overview. Uh, as I mentioned, I think it's good to keep an eye on the alarm list. So if something's wrong, you should probably take care of it. Uh, we have the dashboard, it's another monitoring. So you have some metrics showing uh, the number of devices, number of alarms. Uh, number of connected user sessions, I think both CLI and RESTConf and NetConf. Uh, and the number of service instances. And then you can say, is this enough to actually monitor a system? If you have a very dynamic environment, you have a lot of transactions, it will probably, the numbers will probably change a lot. So, and it's only a momentary view. I'm not sure if you're, any one of you have, have ever used it. Uh, and then we have the insights manager, and this is actually the view of, of the metrics we we have in the metrics framework. Uh, and this is also just, uh, uh, I would say, static view. We have some history up here in the real-time insights. Uh, so if someone of you think it's useful, let me know. I think it's a little bit hard to use. It's a lot of numbers, but what do they say? I, I personally, I don't know. Uh, and that's why I think better monitoring solutions outside that and so is really, really needed. Let's go back. We will not click on the matrix manager yet. And then I also mentioned you should also keep keep an eye on the commit queue. Uh, I hope in, in the live demo later I will show you how this view looks like. But when you have a lot of transactions in your system, uh, this view, I would say, is not actually working very, very well because there are too many changes, and so you, it's hard to get, uh, get the view of what is actually happening. Uh, so this was actually the start 
uh, what we have inside NSO. Let's move over and have a look at the monitoring view. Let me close this. Uh, this is just, I uh, just want to show you the view of Grafa, uh, sorry, Prometheus. So we can actually see we have some target, but we, I can see that uh, those are not up and running. I have another view later on that will show you. Uh, but I, I can see it's, it's collecting metrics besides from some of the uh, sources. That was a little bit sad, but uh, let's move into uh, Grafana. Uh, so in this environment, uh, I preload some some uh, uh, some dashboards. Uh, unfortunately, no, now that it's not collecting data, we will not see anything in here, so it will be empty. Uh, so I will actually. Let's skip that one and move directly to the live demo. Let's connect to the VPN, see if it works. So we hope we will get some more real metrics. Yes, so I will actually see, I would say almost the same view, view as before. Uh, but in this system I have uh, I have a proof of concept where I'm actually running some, some, some robustness testing to actually see how NSO behaves in the long term when we actually push a lot of transactions and uh, do a lot of sync froms. Uh, let's dig into all the details uh, and why you should actually should monitor a system. I would say the minimum sh you should do is actually you should always monitor that your service working okay, you have enough RAM, you have enough disk, so don't run out of that. Uh, but in this view, you, you can also see, uh, when you look at the CPU graphs, you, all, you always see a lot of, lot of dynamics. And here you can actually see, I'm probably running the same sequence of, of commands over and over again, so you, you will... Uh, as long as it looks the same, I think ev everything is okay. So if something crashes, it will probably get a flat line and I think some, something is wrong. But you also have the metrics from, you have network. Uh, you're, as I mentioned before, you also have metrics from the hardware layer. Uh, but since, th since this is a virtualized machine, I only get metrics. Uh, I don't have any metrics from the, from the temperature sensors, but you can also if I had that, you, you can actually see a correlation be between uh, the transaction throughput in NSO and the temperature of the CPU. Uh, so that was one level. And then I was, uh, was talking about uh, collecting metrics from, from the log files. Uh, and you will probably have a look uh, have had a look in our log files and you just do some grep commands to actually find errors. But you, you don't get any view when did the error occur, when did that happen. So what you actually see here is, is a view where, where you can uh, have just the metrics uh, frequency over time. Uh, then you have it split by log file. You can actually see which log files produces the output. We can have a look at the Java VM, see if we actually push. 
nothing from the Java VM, that's good. Either it's not doing anything or there is, uh, it's working just okay. We can look at the developer log. Uh, and then we have on the right side, what was, damn it, sorry. Let's go back. Uh, on the right side, we have all the log information split by uh, severity level. Uh, and I would say from the, from NSO, we want, we will have, we're working for zero tolerance of error messages in the log files. Because if there is an error message, it's actually us admitting that we have some kind of software problem and you should file a ticket for it because we shouldn't actually uh, allow for that because if there are too many error messages that are not considered errors that then that will be uh, just a lot of noise and it can actually hide the important error messages let's go back let's have a look at the process monitor uh, so on the left side, we have data summarized per package. Uh, and first I will give you just a hint of, I would say the complexity of the NSO processes. Uh, so when S NSO starts, you've probably seen that the NSS.SMP process, which is the main, main Erlang process. But then it starts up a lot of processes. And what are they? Uh, you probably recognize the, the Java VM. Uh, but then we have a lot of, as, as I mentioned, one Python process, at least per package. And then there is one Python process per call point in each package. And as you can see down here, the observability exporter actually spawns six, uh, six new processes. And if, if you have big packs like this, it can be quite tricky to actually find wh wh where, where is the problem. Uh, and that is also why I think it's uh, to get the traceability, it's important, important to actually include information so you can actually do the tracing. And today, the only thing we have is actually the, the process ID. I will go back. Yep, please do. No. What do I mean? We'll do the trace in inside the a package. Uh, no, no, you yes, yes, yeah, you have the same call uh, features from from uh, in Java as well. If you have service implement in Java. Okay. Let me go back. This one, no. Was, was it later? Do yeah, yeah, but please do. Let me go on. Uh, Okay, this yeah, okay, this this process tree. These are the process IDs. The process ID yeah, to identify which process that it is. Uh, let me go into the into Grafana and show you how it's actually mapped there. So in the left view we have all the metrics summarized per package. So here we can actually see we have, for example, the observability exporter. Uh, this is the RAM usage for observability exporter, but let's look at look at the CPU usage instead. Uh, we can uh, get some more data. Let's look for the three last hours. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, as you know, the, the observability exporter actually consists of in total seven processes just to export the data. Uh, so here on the right, we have the metrics and we also have I included the process ID so we get some traceability. Uh, so the question is on the left, which processes, which, which of the observability processes causes that graph? So we can sure we don't we know that it's not the main process that that is the package process. It is not that one. It is not that one. Yeah, that one it is. At least some of it, but not all. We also have that process it causes a lot of CPU usage. That one. Just a little bit a few. Uh, but the problem we have today, we have no traceability between call point and process ID uh, unless you do some tracing in the log files to actually save that information. And this is something I think we should, should improve. Because when you do root cause analysis, you can actually see in the graph, if the process cra will crash, you can actually see where it ends. But then you want to be able to actually know which call point was it. And the only thing we have today is actually look, look in the, the log files for the process ID. Uh, let's go back. I will not actually dig, dig into the observability exporter. I think that's in the area where Christian is doing a much better job than me. Uh, but the, the idea of the observability exporter is to Actually, you can actually dig into the details of, of a transaction. Uh, and in this setup, I use uh, Grafana Tempo to actually do the graphing. I would say it's the same as, as Jaeger, but... Uh, so you, you get all the details. Uh, and uh, as a connection from, uh, from my code example before, uh, or this, this progress trace, API we have, so you can in your service code, uh, you can trace, create traces of your own, and they should appear hi here as well. Let's go back. Uh, and then, of course, th these are just, uh, I would say, preloaded. Uh, dashboard that, that, that I've created. But then you can also, I think, uh, when, when you do monitoring, you want to correlate data. And one way to correlate data is to actually include a lot of views from different sources in the same dashboard. So we'll actually get the same timeline all over uh, for all the graphs. So if there is a peak in CPU usage, you can actually correlate it to some kind of other metrics that you have collected. Uh, let me go back, see. I think I have covered the most. Uh, and the purpose of this is to, let's go back to the presentation. Ah, that was stupid. Takes too long. Start up the presentation. Uh, we have published a Git repository on, on GitLab. So you can actually use this, this QR code. And then you can just uh, do a Git clone. Uh, follow the instructions. You send an email to me when it's not working. Uh, because this is something that, that we really want to actually push, getting our customers integrated to start monitoring this, their system. Uh, and this, this monitoring stack, you can run it in your laptop. Primarily, uh, the instructions are for Linux, but you can run them in Mac as well. So when you actually do the testing in your own laptop, you can just start it up and you can just connect your running uh, uh, running NSO instance and collect the metrics just where, where you are. Uh, 
and then hopefully we will get a lot of ideas and bring that into your production system. Uh, but now, have you decided? Do you want the red pill or the blue pill? The red one. The red one. Wh which one was that? Uh, I was actually looking up some, some nice movie quotes, but, but I forgot them at the moment. Let's go back. Let's log in again. And as you know, if you have seen the movie... Sorry. Computer problems. I need to stop my presentation. Yeah, absolutely. If you have seen the movie, you know that the Matrix is, they have the optimal monitoring solution. You look into the Matrix and you see everything what is happening. Are you ready? Remember which pill you took. <laughs> this is the next generation of monitoring that will solve everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm.